Men who suddenly lost your interest in someone, but for a weird reason, what was it? An elderly gentleman fell in front of us. He took a nasty fall. She found it hilarious. Instead of helping, she just stood there laughing. I helped that person out, and I felt so embarrassed for her behavior. Also, that was the last time I saw her. It was a major turnoff for me. Every time I would stand close to her, I could smell piss. I thought maybe she was going through her periods or some UTI, but the smell was consistent for days and very strong. I just couldn't associate such a pretty face with such smell, so I backed out. Also, some people say I have a strong sense of smell, so that could be it as well. UTI maybe, poor hygiene maybe, or it could be that she was on drugs. People that take Mephadrone smell like cat piss, the reason it's called Meow Meow on the streets. What baffled me the most was that she was very well put together, in general. Clean clothes, nice hair, good makeup, and all in all, well put, I don't know what was down there. I went on a date with a gal who was lovely, but advised me, with a little prompting oddly enough, that kitties are self-cleaning, so I never wash them. I think she may have misunderstood the extent to which they are self-cleaning, because, yeah, the hygiene was not on point specifically in that area. The wild thing was, just like in your case, otherwise she was quite well put together and appeared cleanly, just as she thought you weren't supposed to give the old girl even a rinse due to its miraculous self-cleaning properties. I invited the girl from my psychology course I'd been vibing with to a party. Her car rolled up and I came out to greet her. But it was a dude's car, and she was drunkenly making out with him as I walked up. I didn't flip out or anything, but she slurred her way through some weird attempt at reassuring me that I shouldn't worry cause she was only sleeping with him to punish him because he was a bad guy, apparently that's a thing she does, and that I was a good guy. I didn't ask what happened to the good guys. I felt bad for her date, whom she completely ignored the rest of the night. As for the girl, she ended up totally engrossed with the party host's gerbil, tapping on the glass of its cage, whispering how she wanted to kill it. I found somewhere new to sit in psychology class for the rest of the semester. I'd been talking to this girl in class who I thought was really cool. We ended up going for a bite after class one day, and she suggested we go hang out in my dorm room. Hell yeah! Then she took off her glasses and she looked exactly like my mom. It was so jarring that I excused myself to the bathroom to regroup, but when I came back, I couldn't unsee my mom's face on her. I made some lame excuses and went back alone. I felt bad about bailing on her, but how the hell would I tell her the real reason? Either she thinks I'm a weirdo, or thinks I'm saying she looks like she's in her 50s. They smelled wrong. I did this, tried explaining to my friend, and they kept insisting that the person didn't smell bad. I couldn't get my friend to understand that it wasn't bad, just wrong. Something about their smell was just not right, still not sure how else to explain it, and I've never experienced it since. There are scent profiles which people can pick up on, and the more you like someone's scent, the more genetically different their immune systems tend to be from yours. Women are particularly sensitive to this, and partners who smell better to their partner have better relationship happiness and more frequent ex. That's really interesting. I always gravitate towards men who smell good, but no one else can notice the smell. I don't like cologne, so it's not their cologne. They just smell like comfort and love. I don't know how to explain it. It's actually a thing. If someone smells attractive to you, it's because they're genetically different than you, which would lead to better offspring, etc. I learned about it in biology in high school 20 odd years ago, and it just made so much sense why the girl at school everyone found hot just didn't smell right to me. I've heard about this, like the sibling scent thing. Females with brothers are often repulsed by the smell of their sibling's bedroom. Never thought it related to absolute random people you're not related to. I may have to look further into it. Some people also have horrific hygiene, and their rooms bast in that misfortune of scents. My mate ghosted a girl simply because he didn't like her cadence when she spoke. Imagine dating someone who spoke like Obama when he first started giving presidential speeches. My darling, tonight has been the best night so far. The dinner was absolutely spectacular. And even though the waiter was slow, I was happy because it gave me all the more time to be with you. Now let me be perfectly clear, the casserole is amazing. This was me. 
but I heard from a family member about their co-worker. Apparently, this guy was happily married with kids for years, then had a stroke. Sadly, he instantly hated his wife and his kids and got a divorce. Complete personality change at work too. That, as a husband and father, scares me if it happens to us. I heard a similar story from a co-worker. A woman got a brain tumor and her whole personality changed. She split up from her husband and was being really vile during the whole process. She had the operation and was back to being the lovely person she'd been before. I read somewhere that tumors in a certain area of the brain, can't remember which region, are colloquially known in the medical field as the a-hole tumor because of personality changes like you described. That would be a really heartbreaking situation to be in, knowing that it's not their fault, but still being treated horribly by a loved one. I'm told something similar happened with my maternal grandmother before she passed. I was too young to really remember, but family members described her having a stroke and becoming an unrecognizable a-hole overnight. It was a really horrible relationship, even this aside, but my wow, I think I actually hate this person moment was when we were at Badlands National Park. We were just walking out of the gift shop with some other woman when she just let go of the door and it slammed into that woman's face. I said to her, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Then, when we got to the car, I said to my GF in a joking tone, I can't believe you didn't hold the door for her, haha. <laughs> because she was a very miserable person all the time, this made her mad, and she went, Well, you're the man you're supposed to hold the door. I don't need to hold the door for anybody. And yeah, that one statement alone was very eye-opening for me. Seriously, the easiest, least heartbreaking breakup I've ever gone through. Her ditzy and naive behavior was really cute at first, but eventually I found out she really was that dumb and dating her would be exhausting. Same. I knew I had to break it off when I realized I didn't want to take her out of town for the weekend, mainly because of the hours I'd have to spend with her in the car. I cannot stress the importance of car ride compatibility enough for a successful relationship. She didn't hold the door open to people just meeting her at the door. She would let it slam on people behind her. She didn't do the little thank you wave to other cars that let her out. She didn't say please and thank you to serving staff. She wasn't overtly rude, she just had a bit of a me, me, me vibe. These are the exact things that turn me off completely. She had a set of golf clubs in a golf bag standing in the middle of her bedroom, right in the way of everything. After a few weeks of visits, I finally suggested that maybe she should put the clubs in her garage. Well, she didn't like my suggestion, and basically came unglued at the idea that I would tell her how to live her life. So I agreed, no one should tell you how to live your life. Bye. That was the end. My cat didn't like her. I brought her home to introduce her to my parents, and she met my childhood cat. It goes psychotic. Just for her reaching down to pat him, he panicked, attached himself to her arm, and wouldn't let go, just clawing at her like he found a demon to fight or something. When he eventually detached himself, they were both running around the room screaming as she tried to wave him off her arm, I checked her over and he did some damage. He's never reacted like that to anyone before or since we broke it off shortly later. I found out a few years ago that she was in the court system. Why? She tried to kill her own kid. I didn't dodge a bullet because of my cat. I dodged an artillery shell. Way back in college, I was doing some training for a call center job, and there was a super beautiful girl in my class. We got divided up into groups for something and got grouped together. Pretty much the first thing she did was start making fun of our disabled co-workers in another group. And on top of that, she was dumb as a bag of rocks. Seriously, one of the most dumpster fire personalities I've ever encountered. She asked really precise things about our future. Worst part was that she would talk me through building our future house. Which color it should be and how she wants the kitchen to look. Um, no ma'am. This is our second date. Relax. Third date and she was talking how she would like to get pregnant so we could have a kid after I graduate the year after. Third freaking date. Still don't understand how I didn't nope out at that exact moment. Took me four more dates to run. I know a girl just like that. Most guys nope out. 
the ones that don't have, shall we say, issues. Then she wonders why she can't find her man. I kind of feel sorry for her because she has an overbearing mother who is constantly at her side to settle down with her prince charming. But at the same time, she doesn't listen when people tell her that not every guy who nods and says, that's nice, is buying into what she is saying. I went on a few dates with a girl who, by all means, was a perfect match for me. Kind-hearted, funny, hot, and super into gaming and anime. On our third date, we did a double date with her ex-boyfriend, who I was friends with, and his new girlfriend. He brought up a story about a time she spit her pants, and she chimed in and told the whole story. Immature me was super grossed out and lost all attraction. That's probably exactly what the dude wanted to happen. Looking back, I cringe at the fact that I dumped her. Her biggest flaw was that she was willing to tell a very embarrassing story in front of me. LOL. What an idiot I was. I had a very attractive coworker whom I would get tongue tied around because she was like young Audrey Hepburn level beautiful. One time she made a really gross joke about shitting in her leggings and the attraction switch flipped off immediately. It was a relief, honestly, because I never remotely had a shot with her and was able to interact with her more professionally afterward. She came over to my house and offered to cook. I bought the groceries happily. Then she proceeded to cut up the chicken in my nice nonstick pan with my shun knife. She made a comment how the pepper looked so tasty. I told her that's not pepper, that's Teflon. Never even talked to her after that. Oh wow, I can feel the pain of that from here. My sister once did something similar, but she'd already banked about 50 years of good behavior with me, so I had to just kind of write it off. Her husband does most of the cooking in their house, fortunately. This is why you always hide the good knives. We all learn this lesson the hard way. Walked into the kitchen once to see my father-in-law cutting up all the things for a massive salad for a party using my brand new Zwilling Pro 8 chef knife directly on the tile counter. Goes for cutting boards too. Have a nice Viking acacia board. My brother-in-law, who's built like Thor, used it to cut multiple loaves of bread for the aforementioned party and the gouges he left are deep and frightening. In biology class, she kept laughing while stabbing a dead frog that we were supposed to dissect. Dude, same. I was back in high school though, and I was mad at this girl I was partnered with. We even struck up a fun convo as the teacher was getting all the stuff ready. We had a fairly direct outline of what we're, we're supposed to do and identify. Nah. She slit the belly open and began just pulling everything out. I just sat there, confused as frick as to how savage she was going on with this poor little formaldehyde addled pond boy. I never talked to her again after that day, and I considered it a blessing. Depends on how she went about it, but I've grown up with people raised on farms, hunting, and fishing, and this sounds like something they would do. My old neighbor would chat about anything while gutting or cleaning a fish. At some point, I think it just became muscle memory. I'm not sure if it was a weird reason since I can't imagine anyone enjoying this, but her place reeked of old, stale animal piss. I had taken her home after a date, but I realized I really needed to hit the restroom but she lived a solid 10-15 minute drive from civilization. So she agreed for me to use her toilet real quick. The moment I stepped through the front door, it was like a solid wall of stale animal piss punching me in the face. Did my best to not gag crossing through the whole house, being yipped at by two different rat dogs, don't know how to spell it, tiny, annoying, trembling, fearful bravery, and spotted at least two cats, I think peering at me from behind furniture. Even had to hold my shirt over my nose while I was using the toilet. It was awful. Seriously, clean up after your pets. It's one thing if the accident happened while we were gone, but I've had animals before. Fresh or semi-fresh smells different from stale and old. We were exting back and forth, then one morning she just sent me a photo of her breasts covered in some other guy's load. We weren't exclusive, but nothing I'd said implied I'd be into that, and it 100% killed any interest I had in her. Gave me a good point to empathize with women not wanting surprise dong pics, even from guys they're seeing though. 
I had a similar situation. I was talking to this girl. We were on and off friends, and on and off more than friends. One day we were texting, it started getting a bit actual, and she started sending me her nudes, several of them. But they weren't selfies. They were taken of her on a bed from a clearly floating camera angle a few feet away from the bed. I asked, who took these? And it started to crumble from there. Went on a date with a Polish girl. Was going quite well. She seemed really nice. Then she suddenly started asking me what my opinion of Polish people was. I would have thought being on a date with her would kind of answer that. But alas, I assured her I had no issue with them. They're good people, from what I've experienced. All good. And then she wouldn't let it go. She asked me again, like three or four times. We got stuck on this for like a solid 30 minutes of me telling her the same thing. I honestly don't know what else I could have said to reassure her, but she seemingly wasn't getting the answer that she wanted. I guess she had some insecurity about it, but the way she wouldn't drop it despite me asking her to move the conversation on made me think this is something that would be hanging over any potential relationship and wouldn't go away, so it made me lose interest pretty quick was dating a girl for a few months and one night we went out to a bar and we happened to run into one of her old guy friends. The night wraps up and he asks for a ride so she says she'll drive him home. We get to the car and I start to get in the front seat and she tells me to get in the back seat and her friend just gave me a look like I was a chump and said, yeah, get in the back seat. I just closed the door and walked away. Never called her again. Between breaking up with my ex and meeting my current partner, I briefly dated this bipolar chick. She was funny in DTF 24-7, but incredibly hot and cold most of the time. I remember going over to her place for the last time and seeing how disgustingly gross her kitchen was. Mold on every plate, sticky floors, you get the idea. So I cleaned her whole kitchen for her, and it looked awesome. But instead of even a quick thanks, she unloaded on me about how I clearly didn't love her because I thought she was gross. I calmed her down, left once she was asleep, and didn't talk to her for a few days because she was still raging, according to her friends. So I jumped ship. I don't expect praise for doing a job, especially when I decided to do said job unprompted, but I do expect to not have someone rage for multiple days at a time over my decision to clean their stank butt kitchen. On a first date, I once had a girl spill water on herself and get really upset. She said she was going to the bathroom to dry off, but instead discreetly paid for both our meals and left. Took me over five minutes to realize she was gone and another five to find out she paid. Never heard from her again. It's possible I did something to annoy or offend her, but I genuinely think she was just embarrassed about the spill. Hygiene, she was like my twin personality wise. We got along great, but she would use heavy perfume to cover up her B.O. Her hair would look a bit greasy at times and I could tell some days that she hadn't showered in a while. She also partied a lot and was into party drugs. Wasn't really my cup of tea. I was very infatuated by her when our friendship started. Her looks and personality were very attractive to me. Over time though, I just found that my attraction fizzled out and I just loved her as a friend. I could not get over her hygiene. She eventually asked me out, but I was not interested in that kind of relationship with her. Unknowingly at the time, that ended our friendship. She stopped talking to me after that. Still a bit saddened by it. It was quite a few years ago now though. I don't think this is a weird one, but the cleanliness of her car. I drove us for the first few dates, but one day she offered to pick me up at work and we could hang out, so I said hell yeah. When I got in, there were fast food bags and trash surrounding my feet. I looked to the back seat and it was covered in trash. That little leg space between the bench and driver passenger seats was filled to the top with empty bottles and loose food wrappers. She didn't even comment on it, like, oh, I tried to get this clean today, but insert any excuse here as a Hail Mary. So yeah, an easy reason to stop seeing someone, but I thought it was weird how anyone could keep their car in that condition. I took her to the zoo for a date. They had an animatronic dinosaur exhibit. When I saw the sign, I said I definitely want to go see it. Her reply was, I thought they were extinct. I then explained that they were robots, not real dinosaurs. She then told me, no, the sign says that they are real. I explained again that they are robots and that it says that for kids. 
She argued with me for five minutes that the zoo had real dinosaurs. Then we passed the bear exhibit, and she also thought that they were extinct and used this to prove her point about the dino exhibit. I was 24, pretty inexperienced in life and very inexperienced in dating. I started seeing this chick, and we decided to keep things casual after a date or two. She had a four-year-old daughter shared custody with her ex. At one point, she mentioned her ex scolding her for playing Left 4 Dead when her kid was around because it gave the kid nightmares. I thought, like, I get it. It's been a long day. This is the game you're into. Maybe you have plans to play it with friends. Maybe you thought your kid was asleep and didn't hear the game or whatever. I later learned she didn't even own an Xbox. She did most of her gaming at a LAN center, meaning she took her four-year-old daughter with her to the LAN center and played a game she knew gave her kid nightmares. That was an extra layer of irresponsibility for her kid. That was a huge turnoff for me. I met a girl who was really fun at first. We could talk about anything for a long time. But later she started talking way too much about random bullshit stuff. She became extremely boring. One time she was counting her shoes while we talked on the phone. And she was describing each pair, how they looked, and where she bought them. And it was like, I bought these shoes here. Actually, I bought them there. No, sorry. Actually, I forgot I bought them in another place. Or maybe not there. Hmm. I don't remember where I bought them. Maybe at that other other place and it was going on and on forever her shoe monologue probably lasted around 30 minutes and i just couldn't take it anymore every conversation became like this i would just listen to her blabbering while i was boiling inside from boredom and every time before finishing our phone call she would say my name and i would ask yes then she waited 10 seconds and then said i love you Ah, uh, the cringe. And on top of that, she was always speaking in a monotone voice like a robot.